Hello and welcome. As I mentioned already many times on this channel, I have a to-do box with many unfinished repair projects which are waiting for my attention. Usually untested hardware or parts which I struggle to repair land in that to-do box for later, with a hope to gain some time and knowledge and give it a second chance. Or third, or fourth, whatever. And recently the box was filled to the top with expansion cards, like sound cards, I.O. controllers, graphics adapters and so on. So I decided to go through the parts and see if I can bring some of those parts back to life. And today I would like to show you this card. An ISA sound card with Yamaha chip. Believe me or not, I got this card as a donation from Paul in USA around two years ago, maybe even slightly more. A main board from the donation I repaired back then. It was a nice painting 2 board, which I still use in one of my main test machines. So, Paul, in case you watch, thank you once again. However, this card was reported faulty and went into my to-do box for later. I already tested it and it gets properly detected by the Unisound Universal Sound Card driver. At this point, I'd like to thank also Jace Fox once more for creating this amazing driver. I hope it will be open source one day, but today you can find it as a binary on Vogons. The link is in the description. So the card gets initialized properly and when I start, for example, Wolfenstein 3D, it is detected as Sound Blaster. However, the sound in the game is very distorted and broken. Obviously, this card needs a repair, but is it any good? This is a clear yes. It is a very late, highly integrated and cost-reduced card. It has no huge historical value, but this card's chip comes from Yamaha and has the original OPL3 FM sound synthesizer integrated. This means that this card will deliver genuine Yamaha and Adlib sound, which is great for the older games. Also, this card is very uncomplicated, fully creative Sound Blaster Pro 2.0 compatible, has a reasonable output quality, supports also Windows sound system and MPU 401 wavetables and synthesizers. Well, the first thing which you want to do when repairing a sound card or any hardware is of course test the voltage. But I already know that the card gets detected and is even working to some extent, so the voltage is most probably okay. Well, on the regulator we get 5 volts. The card also delivers some sound outputs, which means that the ISA bus communication is probably ok. If the sound is distorted like this, there can be multiple reasons. The amplifier, the digital to analog converter or the crystals. If the amplifier is broken, usually you get a constant distortion or one channel is muted. The digital to analog converter usually either works or not. In this case I can hear that the sound deviates in its speed and is choppy, which could be a sign of a broken crystal. So let's check what we get. This card has two crystals and on this one I measure 8.2 MHz. The inscription on the crystal says 24 MHz, so this seems to be already wrong. The second crystal delivers 11.3 MHz, which again is not what is written on the crystal. It should deliver 33.8 MHz. One interesting detail is that both crystals deliver about one third of the frequency which they should. 8 MHz is a third of 24 MHz and 11 MHz is a third of 33 MHz. That's strange. Let's check for shorted components around the crystals. There are some capacitors and resistors around which affect the generated frequency. At least there are no shorts. What about the resistance? This resistor has a value of 215k, which I believe is wrong. The second resistor is 12 mega ohm. That is almost a break. And the other one is 215K. Let's take a look under a microscope. 
So, here are the two guys. Both resistors say 392, which means 3.9 kilo ohm, which means that at least one of those is broken. I could measure 215k on one, which is in parallel to something else in the circuit. But it is impossible to measure 12 mega ohm on a 3.9k resistor. Doesn't matter what is in parallel, it can't be higher than that. So, let's remove the resistors. Here are the two guys. This one shows something around 300k. The second one is completely broken. That is very strange that both resistors got broken. Unfortunately, I didn't find any 3.9k in my spare parts, but I found 4.7k ones. That is not perfect and could potentially make issues, but it should be close enough to at least show some improvement. So, let's see. Here we are getting now 24.5 MHz, which is uh, actually perfect. I was expecting some deviation due to inexact resistors. The second one delivers also perfectly fine 53.8 MHz. Nice. Let's give it another uh, sound check. That sounds perfectly fine to me, no choppy sounds anymore. Now let's use um, Duke 3D setup utility to test stereo sound and Sound Blaster Pro 2.0 compatibility. Stereo works perfectly fine. Now FM. That seems to work as well. Great. So, I would call it a success. Uh, thanks to Paul once again at this point. As you see, even if it took so long, eventually this sound card got its second chance. Unfortunately, I have no slot bracket for it, but I 3D printed one replacement, which should be good enough. And this is it for today. Another happy working part, which will hopefully bring a lot of retro gaming joy. It is not the time for it yet to end up in a landfill, I suppose. And I hope you enjoyed this small repair. More expansion card repairs will follow soon. And so far, thank you for watching and goodbye.